Hey, thank you uh, very much, Ian, for uh, staying up late. What time is it in Wales? It's early afternoon, 1 a.m. Okay. So, uh, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. About the usual time I'd be heading to the sack. So, uh, okay. no, it's a privilege as always, Ken. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for you. being back. It's been a while since we have you on. Uh, yeah. an- another thing I just want to ask everybody in the chat, if there's any echoes or anything, please let me know. I hate Wirecast so much, but I'm not going to stop I just want to thank Ian so much. Uh, I've been following you for a long, long, long time. I have learned so much useful information from you. The stuff you do on RF testing, man, that is so good to me. Just breaking it down, making it simple, helping us understand what channels and how it all meshes together. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. I, I was going to say, you can't be watching my channel if you've learned something, because I, I won't accept that. But yeah, no, no. Like, I try to do something a bit different in the sense of I, like I'm just some fool in a garage talking nonsense most of the yeah, time. Yeah, but you're a smart fool and that's what counts and you're sharing that knowledge with other people and that's what's important. Yeah, and I think knowledge is an interesting thing because people, you know, you always hear this term of knowledge is power, but if you if if everyone shares a little bit, everyone benefits. And mm-hmm. that's the, the the real thing is if you know something, why wouldn't you share it with the community? Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't have to benefit from it. You don't have to financially benefit. Just put it out there and let people run with it. Absolutely. And uh, there's links to your uh, channel and Dave's stuff. Please, everybody, share the links, go mm-hmm. to the links, subscribe, all that stuff. If anybody has any questions, please put them in the chit chat. Uh, yeah, between- and he's not just an FPV guy. Uh, oh, no. he's this no. way. No. No, this way. <laughs> no, I and, get so confused. And he's I, not I, just I an FPV guy. He's a DJI guy. guy from the start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, look, and, look, I actually helped them for a long time as well. You know, it was, yeah, I used to be a camera drone guy. I was FPV, then camera drone, but then always FPV, but I didn't really talk about FPV. It's you know, it's funny you should say that because what I what I like to do from time to time is go to people's channels and scroll. I scroll way back, way, way back to the beginning. <laughs> And do, oh, yes. without looking, do you remember the name of the first video on your channel? If it's the first live one, it'll probably be a, a, either a, a prop related video or a mm. phantom related video. Probably it's, phantom three related. Oh, it's from seven years ago. Uh, here's yeah. here's just a little bit. Here's, here's just oh, a it's little bad. Bit. Yeah. No, it's not bad. Hello. Welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to discuss two things. The first is the new propellers for the DJI Phantom 3. Sorry. And that's how Ken's we balance favorite. them. Yeah, and how to balance them. Do Does anybody yeah. balance DJI I propellers? We used to balance props. Spend them on the a pencil. I actually watched that video back and the pauses in it, because I sort of go, hello. And then you're waiting right. and it's like, and today we're going to yeah, but Talk. yeah, but and and you're not even in it. You were you camera no, shy to begin well, with? I, w- I was Mr. Hands for a very long time. Actually, I I did go on camera until eighteen or nineteen, twenty eighteen or nineteen. No, I was not on camera until twenty eight. I think it's probably twenty nineteen. And I don't know why that would be because my God, just looking at you, sir. Mm. I mean, um, mm, oh, mm, oh, mm, oh, you are oh. you are eye candy. <laughs> Are you going to get Ian on the pool float too? If, if you're going for the Carl Pilkington look, is, is what Oh, I would no say. way. Yes. You are totally <laughs> Pilkington. Do you get that a lot? And, uh, uh, hey, there's only one idiot abroad, and I am abroad compared to you guys. So, uh, yeah, no, no. It's, you could just yeah, it's you could just wander onto Gervais' set, and they'd be like, yeah. hey. <laughs> Here comes the idiot. Yeah, uh, um, that's funny. But, uh, yeah, no, seven. I and mean, uh, the crazy thing, Ken, is when you say it, it's like seven years. Mm. Seven years of YouTube, which is, you know, I still, I don't think I've learned anything yet. <laughs> well, you know, seven years for technology is a long time. It's it's ancient, uh, uh, Comparatively, here's just a, another little clip from that same video. And as you can see, we to balance them, we put them horizontal first. So if we sit here that side, mm. that blade is dropping. <laughs> so if we sit it that side, just rub it on the concrete a little bit. It'll be fine. <laughs> so this is showing that that blade is heavier than the top blade. The bottom blade is heavier than the top blade. <laughs> You know, uh, it's your accent that makes anything compelling to us Americans. Yeah. You could read like the ingredients on cereal and be like, oh, yeah, go on. 
<laughs> yeah, and, and, and the funny thing is, you know, I, I used to do a lot of DJI stuff and talk about their the, the ready to fly stuff. And I'll be honest, the reason I actually stopped talking about it was when everything got very expensive. You know, if you th okay, drones were always dear, but the barrier to entry. Okay, drones are cheaper than they've ever been, but they're being released more and more often. And the issue is, you imagine upgrading every model now. Oh, well, it was in a period. Today, DJI almost seemed to have stopped releasing products. But there was a period where a drone didn't even last a year. The new model came eight months later. Right. Well, so, they were you know, going yeah. a after the, the Apple iPhone model for yeah. a while. Yeah. You yeah. Know, to hey, the FAA agrees. They said by the time they finished the NPRM and this uh, remote I think D thing comes out, all of our old drones will be uh, yeah. obsolete. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of obsolete, let me let me just mention something really quick because I know you can speak to this. The Avada and um, yes. the uh, RID firmware that happened with the last firmware update, where we got don't look over here. We got ten bit color. Oh yeah, RID, but ten bit color, and everybody's like, yeah, I want that. Uh, but then my Avada started flying a little differently. Bait and switch is the term I think a lot of people would would use for it, and and uh -huh. yeah, they it's another thing they handled badly because and a job really frustrated me about that. There was no need to hide it. They could have just gone, here it is, mm -hmm. and if you want it, here it is. What's really annoying is they removed the old firmware. That's the real naughtiness in the whole thing. Is once you have upgraded in the US, you can't go back. And, yeah. and that was the real naughty thing. And and I do get they had to make a change for current sold product. That makes sense. But as a company the size DJI was, they could have just done it by activation date. So if your product activated today onwards, you had to have the new firmware. And if it was pre-activated, then you could still have access to the pre-read firmware. Here, here's an idea. Put it in the patch notes. Yeah. Tell people that you're doing it instead of well, just locking of them did. in. Well, they sort of They just sort of said optimized flight behavior, which is DJI's keyword for, I won't swear, but we've messed something up. Yeah. Or we've done something you won't like. I thought that meant it wasn't going to flip out anymore. I didn't know it was, you're now going to be tracked and you have to have a cell phone every time you use the thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and look, Ken's video was one of the ones I watched on it because <laughs> I couldn't use it over here because obviously it, it doesn't work in the UK. And Ken's was, flight was, I really enjoyed it because Ken was like, I have no idea what this is going to do. <laughs> I'm going to take it outside and let's see what happens. And the frustration in his him, it was just amazing because it was like, this is bonkers. This is driving me nuts. And, yeah. and you know. Yeah, and, and, if, and if I have drone experience for for years, yeah. you know, people that are just getting the Avada as their first drone, they're going to be even more frustrated. And it's a very popular drone. I like the Avada. I like what it does. I like how it flies when it flies right. Um, yeah. But uh, it's a great product. It's actually, it, it, uh, I've been critical of the floor. And that is, it, it, that's a bit like saying I drove my car at 130 mile an hour and turned fast and it flipped <laughs> you yeah. could argue that is the sort of flaw it, it isn't 100 percent right i still think there's something fundamentally off about it but what it is designed for it is absolutely a beast that which is a cine whoop a, a slow cine whoop i put the avatar into places i wouldn't put any other fpv drone yeah. I, you know, I'll find a small gap in a tree because the DJI stability is so good. The, the fail safe is so good. Uh, it's very rare you get a drone that flies just as easily as, as this thing does. It right. is very, very and good. And you're talking about in normal mode. I mean, yeah. you can yeah. rip a little bit. Yeah. And it's good Dude. that they let you do that. But really the what it is. The like, was the most impressive part of that yeah. drone to me. Uh, I took Ken's and I flew it into Caraway Hospital and he's screaming, don't stop, Dave, come back. And I'm like, no, I, I think I can go all the way through the building and into the atrium from uh -huh. here. And he's like, please don't. And I'm like, hey, I'm going. You did it and anyway. I, did. Yeah. I kept going. And when I finally got into this last hallway, it lost connection. But it just yeah. stayed there and hovered in place. And I was able to turn my body and get better positioning and reconnect and then fly up out of a skylight and keep sending it. And it this is a bando that's packed with reinforced concrete, like thick, thick. But yeah. the fact that it just doesn't fall out of the sky when you get to the edge of your limit was that's next. And, and that's actually, you know, 
if if you're after a drone that works well in stabilized modes, you know, beta flight's got stabilized, dino has got stabilized, but none of them are like DJI's. And that's where it's at its best, is if when you fly the Avata in a GPS mode with the visual system on the bottom, it will just sit there. And, and and that's where you can sort of push it more than an acro mode drone. You know, you can fly an acro quad anyway, but there are places you wouldn't want to fly an acro quad without with the risk of not getting it out. With the Avata, actually, I'd push it further. You know, with, with how all the garbage that we have to deal with, with Chinese drone companies like DJI and how everything comes out of Shenzhen is evil and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But it was the DJI products that made people think, hey, I can start a business with this. Yeah. You know, and it was the Avada in particular that made people think, now I can do fly-through videos like everybody's doing, you know. Yeah. So, and, hey, and, and, and Interrude has a great point, too. He says he talked to his congressional representative about remote ID today. Oh. If you're unhappy with the way things are looking and the FAA's rules right now, the only way you're going to be able to make a change is if you – Get in touch with your congressmen, get in touch with your representatives, and start trying to make changes. There's an initiative right now to change the limit from 250 grams to one kilogram, and that would allow a whole lot more recreational flight to be excluded from remote ID. Mm. And so if you haven't already, check out the FPV Freedom Co Coalition. They are working their tails off for us to try to make things better for this community. And for DJI drones, it makes a difference. For FPV drones, it makes a difference. Anybody that's flying drones, it's going to make a huge difference if we can get that Absolutely. limit Absolutely. I'm on board, I, and I, and I support it. I told my person, I wrote them, and I said, my seven-year-old daughter flies drones in my backyard, and now, because of this legislation, she's going to have to be tracked in my own backyard with a GPS location that any mm. pedo with a cell phone can pick up and determine where she is and how far away she is from that drone. And they can even see what kind of drone she's flying, whether or not it's valuable enough to steal it's it's such an invasion of privacy and a dangerment to the pilots. Uh, I if there's anything we can do to stop it or oh, adjust I know. it, if I got I, to. I'm with you. That is that is that makes practical logical sense. But as we know, the government is not logical. And I think well, once you raise it to the one kilogram, there's no way they're going to make a Mavic uh, not need RID. Unfortunately. The, there's just no other way I see right now. And the FAA I, is about to get renewed. It'll be five years before we have another chance like this to influence them. No, I'm, I'm with you, and I think we should support it. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. yes, Ian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 uh, there's a lot of work being done by the Freedom Coalition guys. I've, I've sent them something over for it. You know, they've been asking for opinions from people and, 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 you know, just little bits and I've sent something in and that I have got something I need to put out on the channel as well on it. And look, anything we can do, it's just a game of constant pressure. That's the only way we'll make a difference. What's going on? Yeah, they're going to keep cutting away at our rights. The only thing we can do is push back. What's going on in the UK? What are you fighting uh, drone wise over there? It's it's not too bad here at the moment. It, it, the, a lot of the instability actually around the rules is around commercial operators. I I'm a commercial op as well, and the, the CAA seem to be constantly messing with the rules commercial operators operate under. And the irony is the general public's rules for average users have pretty much been stable since the European thing. We we. We were part of Europe when the new rules came in and then we left, but we basically adopted what they had apart from RID. The UK threw RID off to the side a minute because they, they want to look at their own solution. But yeah, the CAA are just messing with commercial operators. And the the irony of it is they're not the people you need to mess around with. You know, these are the people who are A, qualified. They've got skin in the game financially. It's often either their full-time or part-time business. They're not going to generally do something stupid, yet they keep messing around with the rules that they op we operate under. Um, so that's where the, the biggest challenges are. Things are pretty quiet over here drone-wise. Obviously, Gatwick is always a, a constant pressure. You know, we're still trying to understand what actually happened there. Um, there's been a, a cut of stuff in Birmingham and Ireland. But overall, it's pretty stable over here. You know, what, people what is, are... I'm sorry. We're, we're busy shooting down balloons with missiles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're not too bad, you know. I was going to say, what what is the the most drone friendly part of the UK? Um, it probably isn't because the it's ocean. all the same set the of rules. Ocean. You know, we don't. Yeah, the ocean. <laughs> we don't. We don't 
everything and falls under one system over here. You know, we don't have the individual. You have individual councils who are starting to try and do stupid stuff like, say, you can't fly over this park. And the rules in the UK are very much you can't you can't you can control the land. You can't control the sky. So you could prevent someone taking off and landing, but you couldn't stop them flying over. Yet you still get stupid things like council saying you can't fly over here. And you're like, well, actually, That's we can. Same yeah, thing. the same thing yeah. here. In fact, yeah. um, n on next TNL, we're going to have Ryan LaTourette on and he is fighting all of these local municipalities. Yeah. There's one, I think, in Iowa. They're talking about and pretty close to passing aerial trespass, which could yeah. set all kinds of horrible precedent. We need to s squash that. You know, it's yeah, a and you got you got businesses trying to sell like you know get your property registered so people won't be able to fly over you, and it, it's all oh, snake oh oil. Oh boy, crap. funny you should say that. Speaking what of snake oil. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, Dave, you wanna you wanna broach this subject because uh, a lot I, I I. I I'm not one to, you know, let's take try a look to, at the website. Mm, let me preface it first because <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not one to, to get my whatever minions I might have or influence in the community and get them to pounce on someone. I'm I'm not yeah. I'm not like that. But on this, we have to destroy this with fire. <laughs> so uh, this is a website uh, called Class G Inc. Okay, and uh, let me let me just read this. This is the About Us page. Uh, our vision at Class G Inc. is to help you protect your privacy. A lot of landowners don't realize that they own part of the airspace above their house. False. Bullshit. That is bullshit. Uh, our goal is to help you monitor that space and have peace of mind knowing who is not only around your house but above it. With our product here at Class G Inc., you will be able to capture drone information and see what is flying above your airspace? The data will be collected from a product monitor who is flying in your airspace, how long they were there, and then a toll will be billed to the drone owner. How are we going to do that? How the hell are we going to do that? Um, th th it's, just, it's just insane, and they, they go on. Uh, what will happen is a photo will be captured of the unregistered drone, and that will be sent to the local authorities. The data will also be collected on how long the unregistered drone was in your airspace. Learn more. Taxing the sky. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So what this is, and Dave, I think you'll you'll agree, this is one of those scam websites. Do you remember when uh, yeah. Part 107 first came out, and uh, there were all these, you do a search, I'll get my 107, there's all these scam yeah. companies, we'll get it for you, when all you have to, you pay them to, to do... To do what you can do for free. This is basically them taking, I hate to keep calling it a Karen app, but it is a Karen app. It's the app that the public would download to see where your drone is. And so they'll do this for you. It's, yeah. a, it's a bullshit operation. Dude, there's not even a product. If you look at the page, yeah. there's no product. There's no screenshots. There's no device. They say they're going to take a photo of the drone too. There's no product at all. This yeah. is all smoke and mirrors. This is what we call vaporware. Yeah. Yeah. Here's it, all the services ripping they people offer. off. Yeah. Capture drone information. Man, I... I, I love how they're going to tax me as I fly over them. <laughs> well, well, look, DJI, you know, what will happen is DJI will send, they'll send the bill to DJI when they track your DJI ID, and DJI will debit it from your DJI credit account on your app. Look, come off my care refresh plan. <laughs> care refresh plan. Yeah, you lose a month. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right, I put the link in the in the chat with an instruction. That means a DDoS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's yeah, just call up our Ukrainian buddies. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? That's just I'm just that I can't look at it anymore. That's just gonna um, keep triggering me. Um, Ian, you um, you and between you and Dave, you you you've uh, piqued my interest about the log files. Do we want to talk? Yes. Touch on that very quickly because this is a sneaky little thing that's going on. With yeah, DJ it's caused a bit of controversy. This. Yeah. Uh, and look, look, there's nothing new here. Look, I, it's fair to say all DJ drones have logged data for a very long time. Yeah. And including the original FPV system, in fact. But what I noticed in the new system is they're logging a lot more data, size-wise, about two to three times the amount they were before. Now, mm -hmm. reality is. 
I'm not saying they're doing anything bad. And actually, I've been shown stuff today that even proves they're not doing anything bad. And there might be some more info coming on this in the very near future, because my video has sort of prompted some good guys to go, well, there's really nothing in there. We've had a look. But I've sort of said, well, it's not public information. So they've gone, well, we'll make a tool to make it public information. So we might actually have a log viewer very, very soon, maybe. But they're still logging a lot of data. And my argument is this. If they're going to do that, obfusc uh, I can't even say the word, hide it mm -hmm. and, and not tell you about it, then they also deserve a kicking for that as well. Now, I'm not saying they're stealing your data and I'm not saying they're doing anything bad. But what they are doing is logging a substantial amount of data and publicly we don't know what that data is. And as a user, you can't see it, you can't delete it. And Does you have phone home? Of... No, we don't think so. We Can, don't believe uh, so. Or, uh, well, the most important thing that I know, uh, me and a lot of pe other people uh, need to know, can, can my uh, drone uh, camera uh, watch me masturbate? Only oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to put a piece of tape over it like on my laptop? <laughs> yeah, a red, you need a red filter. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, and, and look, yeah. I don't think I said in the video that they're doing anything bad. My point was, we're not used to an FPV having products that have this level of logging. Consumer drones, yes, but not in FPV. And more than anything, the video was meant to be a, guys, just so you're aware, DJI, do this. What a lot of people have taken it as is, I'm saying they're ripping, they're stealing your data, killing your pets, and massacring the grandparents. And that's not quite what I said in the video, I don't think. But look, they're logging data. And even if it isn't bad, at the end of the day, you as a user have no control over that. And that's where I have a fundamental issue. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you can't. Know, I have, my you... issue is if A, I can't turn it on and off, and B, I can't delete it. And you can't read it. Nope. And you, you can't, can't read it. It's, yeah, it's not you, useful to you at all. You can't no, even opt out or anything. You can't. You just have no, to. I, and an interesting comment because a lot of people have sort of said, "Well, why? Why? Yeah, but they use it for warranty work." Well, okay. Here's an interesting question: How many ear units, for instance, actually fail and need warranty work? So, does the end justify the means? Does logging four to five gigs of data on every ear unit that is out there justify? the bit of data they get for the 1% of failure. And, and, and you know, you know th that's, that's the question, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, and why can't I just delete the files and void my yep. warranty? Yeah. Because I don't need a warranty. I, I guarantee you, none of my drone stuff ever gets sent back to DJI. It, it ends up in a pile of rubble. Yeah, and, and look, the, 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 you know, the argument on warranty is really simple. DJI can easily write their terms and conditions of, you have the ability to delete logs, but we may require the logs to offer warranty service. And if you've deleted them, we won't offer warranty service. That's black and white. Give the user the control. You know, you, you never complain if you delete something and, and they say, well, sorry, you're, it looks like you're trying to hide something. Okay, that, that's fair enough. But give the user control. Have that, to, that's have, to the, have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Especially with so much government scrutiny on them these days, like hiding it and encrypting it to where the user doesn't have access and no oversight of what's going on inside of there. That's a bad look. Yeah. And, and look, that's, and in some ways, that's why I made the video. Look, I know in general, they're not doing anything bad, bad. They've been caught in the past. But if you're going to log data, hide it from me and not let me delete it, then I'm going to highlight that. And and in it, you know what I mean. Well, because I mean, you're think about yourself open. Think about think about these uh, these sizable logs as yeah. uh, as a canoe, right? You 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 build you, uh, you build it out of a tree. You have a uh, one seat that you're used to. When suddenly there's a second seat, there's nothing bad in the second seat, but something bad could fit in this second seat in the future, right? Yeah. So so you know all all of this data they could in the future decide. Oh, we're going to do something bad now. They're already used yeah. to the size of these packets or whatnot. Yeah, and, and they've left themselves open. You know, at the end of the day, they're hiding it, they're obfuscating it, and they're not giving us access. So what do they expect us to think? Right, it's you know, natural to be... The, yeah, it's yeah. natural to be suspicious. And and I hate, I hate to go down this rabbit hole because there's a lot of people... I'm trying to do more positive things about drones on my channel because we're losing newbies. 
Uh, we're we're leeching newbies. There's people that are like they hear just this past three minute conversation. They're like, ah, hell, that China's firing on me. I'm out. I'm not going to get one. You know, but you know, all of us yeah. w- watching, we're like, okay, well, we have to do this now. I don't like it, but I I like the whole. I like flying better yeah. than I hate what I have to do to do it. So I, and I like DJI a lot. You know, people always uh, there's a few people like you say like I I actually worked. I didn't work for them, but I unofficially worked for them for a long time in the sense of I used to run their Facebook groups. I ran the seven. I created the FPV group. I ran the Ronin group. I, I I did a lot with them. But they also shouldn't get free passes when they're behaving in a way that is anti-consumer. And look, they are. They, you know, they make some. They make the best products in the industry. Period. You know, let's be realistic. No one comes close. It doesn't matter who they are, Autel, Skydio. They, they cannot deliver like DJI does. But they have been caught with their hand in the hot pot of honey in the past. There's been four or five pretty bad data issues over the years. So, you know, at the end of the day, there is fair suspicion. Well, <laughs> let's look towards rainbows and unicorns. What kind of rainbows and unicorns do we have coming down the pike? Do, are there any new drones that you know about? Is you know What's coming down the pike that we can be happy about? This is interesting because obviously DJI have been very quiet. You know, if we talk about, we've got the Mini 2 SE. I'll be careful because I think the S stands for something else. Um, <laughs> like the, the poop edition. Let's ah. just say if you compare it to the Mini 2, it's like a step down. I think the Inspire 3 is around the corner, which is super interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, look, and I think it's going to be a very expensive drone this time. It's going to be a lot more high end. In FPV, we've we've apparently got a new camera on next week um coming for a certain system i can either deny or deny that i might have something Ooh, related can to it that. be for low light please I, I can't possibly talk about that please but, but dji um, nothing but, uh, you know we don't know what's going on with dji03 you know you guys showed that low light footage julia it is shocking at night it really well is. the news is already out on the uh the caddix low light camera for the uh walk snail system if if that's what you're unable to speak yeah. of, because I'm not under an NDA. But <laughs> this is the look out. of a person who is under an NDA. This is what a person <laughs> who doesn't I'm have an NDA. I'm not sure I am, but yeah. Uh, wait till next week. But yeah, DJI, I think we, it's funny enough, I was talking to Ken about this when we had a quick chat the other day, and it's been a dry period, isn't it, in drones and FPV. This We used to always get this Christmas launches, and that seems to have stopped. I don't know why that stopped. We always had a January launch every year, and that seems to have gone away now. Well, I don't know why. They're still I mean, cleaning up the poop trails for, from the actual launch l- by listen, January. I think it's because in the last two years, all the improvements have been incremental. Yeah, you get to a saturation point where, like, okay, you enjoyed that 4K. Here's four and a half K. Will you buy it? You know what I mean? Like, but it's it's funny you say that because I was just looking through their product stack before I came on. You know, you got this Mini 2 SE, and look, DJI have basically created a two hundred dollar product stack. Every two hundred dollars, there's a drone. So it starts with this Mini 2 SE, then it goes to the Mini 3, then it goes to the Mini 3 Pro, then it goes to the Mavic Air 2S, then it goes to the, um, I can't remember what's after that, the, the Mavic 3 is a bit of a bigger jump. But they've created this just $200 roughly jump between all of their models. But there's, as you say, there's nothing really between them. While I have you both here, when will DJI make everything backwards compatible and second part of my question what the hell am i going to do with what the hell am i going to do with my v1 goggles now sell them <laughs> v1s is hard yeah you're at the end of life you know we don't know how long the the a unit is ended apparently mm. we, we don't know for sure but the a unit oh, is i over. can tell you as a vendor i can no yeah. longer purchase can no v2 longer. goggles i can yeah. no longer purchase vistas i can no longer purchase air units uh, they will still sell me the Nebula Pro camera, but yeah. pretty much everything else is gone from that original system. Really? Now, I still have stock, so I still have parts. You can buy them yeah. for me if you need them, uh, but they're going to go away soon. So if you want OG air units and Vistas, get them while you can. Yeah. And really, the V2 goggles, man, they're my favorite goggle on the market right now. And I've tested the G2 goggles quite a bit. I still think the V2 is better. It's got lower latency. It's got a little bit more penetration in my tests. And uh, it'll run on a 6S battery without having to have a 2S battery in it. So I'm sticking with those. I, I say 
grab them while you can because they're going to disappear quick. Are are the older goggle systems um, able to be compatible, but they're just being douches about it and holding back um, on firmware and stuff? Because I would I would love that. Yeah, the V1 mm. is technically no. It is no, a right. hardware difference. Hardware, so right. the V1 is hardware. There's no there's no 2.4 gigs radio. However, let me just add something to yeah. this. The 2.4 gigs is only used for the DJI remote system. There is no reason they couldn't limit 03 to 5 gigs uh -huh. like I've actually requested them through. So technically, they could make the V1s compatible with 03. Technically, there's, there's, there is the only difference in hardware between the V1s and the V2s is the additional radio. The actual chipset, the the base unit is the same. They just mm. added a, another frequency. Right, but then nobody hardware. would buy. Everybody would just keep. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's all about marketing and sales. But I'm talking about like just very simple things. Like you can't use goggles with the the minis. You know what no. I mean? That's, and it makes no sense. It, it doesn't it's make never made sense. Any yet. kind of sense. There was even a rumor that there was going to be an FPV version of the Mini 3 for a while. Yeah. They even and, showed packages that were like the G2 goggles with the Mini. Yeah. Well, the firmware exists. We know DJI have made firmware for the V2 goggles that supports the a 2S and the Mavic 3. We have seen it. It exists in DJI's land. It just never made it out of the door. That That's... Uh, it's it is weird as a company they do this segmented stuff that makes no sense financially mm -hmm. why you've got a piece of hardware that you need to spend some dev dollars on that you can me then sell it to an audience of you know let's be realistic the fpv audience compared to a mini audience a mavic audience is minuscule that audience is enormous the quantities they could sell of those goggles would be tenfold the fpv market yet they don't yeah I don't and a think lot they of they can make enough to sell them right now i'm still uh, unable to get g2 goggles it's they, they just don't have them i think that's what the the light rumor was really about yeah. was not about saving money to cut a couple little pieces off i think it was yeah. mostly about getting rid of parts that they couldn't ha find available yeah, yeah, in yeah. order to ramp up production. A lot of people, uh, for a lot of people, you know, the goggles is the biggest investment in the whole yeah. equation. Yeah, and, and, and they want that. They want the goggles to last. If the goggles would just be backwards compatible, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. A the V1s, is, it is a frustrating situation for the V1 users because they are going to get left behind. They are. It, that that's that's a reality. There are good deals to be had on V twos. Probably when the goggles two become available a bit more, you'll see some more. You know, Ken. I'll be honest. The V twos are the smart move, not the goggles two. The V two is the smart buy today. Mm -hmm. It really is. Wow. Get um, them while you can, boys. But before we get too far afield, and not to get too technical and lose a bunch of people, but I'm I'm very interested in this. I heard that you, uh, dissected. An aeroscope. Did you do that? I didn't do it myself, uh -huh. but I was given information, the, the the insides of it, and a lot of information around it. So, yes, I have seen inside the belly of the beast. Okay, for, for those watching who don't know what the aeroscope is, can you first tell us what it is and uh, why it is a beast, in fact? Yeah, it, it's DJ, it was DJI's in-house remote ID solution. So what they did was create a device that would allow government entities to receive their in-house. They created their own version of remote ID is the simplest term for it. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Aeroscope was a way for them to sell devices that would pick that data up. And, and it would allow them to track DJI drones. We believe others as well, largely DJI. I'll be honest, aeroscope data is very much the same as what's in remote ID today. So it would be aircraft location, pilot location, heading, altitude, the usual basic stuff. Okay. And you can, know, can the general public get one of those? No, but the data isn't that encrypted. You, If you're good enough with an SDR, a radio receiver you can get for your computer, and a bit of code in Kismet, you can decode the data yourself. It can be read. Are they they trying to keep these out of Ukraine? 
Um, yeah, there's been a lot of hoo-ha with them because they were selling them to the Russians. And, and look, you, there was a very good video which showed someone take off and within a very, very short period of time, a mortar came in to that location. Mm. And what they did is they took off and moved. And 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 yeah, there's been a lot of hoo-ha. Interestingly, DJI have now ended Aeroscope. Now, we don't really, they don't talk about these things publicly. It, the product is end of life. We don't know if they intend to replace it or are they just now really going, well, we've got remote ID. What about the Aeroscope well, uh, Mini? Yeah, <laughs> Black Edition, Ultra. Black, and, and yeah, look, right. It is it is an incredible piece of kit as a, as a piece of hardware. It was the one, the one I was given the info on was, I think it was 12 radios, SDRs inside. So it was 12 individual radios it's all connected together and, and it, it, it's a beautiful work of art as a piece of RF engineering. It's you crazy that, that, that it's like a radar detector company making yeah. an anti-radar detector, 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 detector. You know what I mean? And they've always had this fine line. Yeah, they're selling the products and then they sell the product to track the product yeah. that they sell. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, good, no, Mark, I don't think it allowed it. people to take over and land the drone. No. Uh, that is not accurate. No, no. no. Um, from a, a command and control point of view, everything since the Mavic 2 has been encrypted. Pre-Mavic 2, it, like bridge-based, is definitely open to some dodginess, but everything since sort of OcuSync has been fairly good. OcuSync 1, not so much. OcuSync 2 onwards is fine. Okay. It's all encrypted. Well, now that now that all the scary stuff has been put out there, uh, let's. <laughs> that's a horrible segue. But let's talk to the people that want to get into uh, drones and FPV. What, in your opinion, uh, Mr. Madstech, uh, Ian, uh, what what is a good entry level FPV drone and uh, entry level uh, camera drone? Uh, I th I still think th the very best camera drone you can buy today is the A two S. I still think for the bang for buck one inch sensor just it, it, it there is nothing more you'll need mm. it will outperform almost everything fpv is hard because i'd love to be able to say the avat is great but you'll outgrow it quickly and that was the same with the fpv drone and look fly high's got some amazing ready to fly drones i think the dji fpv drone is one of the best products for getting into fpv but you will grow out of it so fast you'll find yourself wanting more. You're and that's the problem. You're talking about the DJI POS? Yes. The potato, <laughs> I call it. The potato. Yeah. The potato. But as far as, <laughs> but it, as, far as it, learning... It is fantastic. As, yeah. It is. I mean, it is. Uh, as, if, you put, if, you, if you put a GoPro on it, it is. Yeah, the camera's shocking. <laughs> but I mean, what it has is all of the safety nets you need. And it's better than the Avata in that sense, because the Avata is... A, it's not a great FPV drone. It's a great cine whoop, but it's not a great FPV quad. Whereas, you know, look, the potato can fly. It can move. It's very quick. It it It's particularly, it doesn't nanny like the Avata does, mm. but you'll find yourself very quickly going, I want to do more. And the first thing you hit, it will disintegrate. And you'll then suddenly realize you need to go and buy a proper FPV drone. Right. No, no, most of them, they'll just go <laughs> throw that care refresh back at it or buy another one. They'll buy a whole nother potato. And that's where I'm like, dude, you're going to wait three to six weeks yeah. to get a replacement in the mail instead of just yeah. putting a new motor on it. And, and, like, and, and, and yeah, and I put a $13 quad. motor and keep flying today. Mm -hmm. I think what lets proper FPV quads down today is the software is, you know, beta flight's brilliant, but it's not for new users. I know there isn't anything really that nannies you enough in the early days today. But if that makes sense, it does. But as far as learning to fly acro, would you say yeah. simulator first or just yeah. bop a little sim. toy around your house to get used it's, to the controls? It's a sim. The problem with acro is you, it, your brain is not used to comprehending what you need to do there's nothing naturally in life that behaves airplanes like airplanes but i mean outside <laughs> of if you're new entirely you've never flown something you know a car is like a dji drone isn't it push stick forward back left right mm -hmm. the angular moment the controlling the speed of angular momentum is not a natural 
thing most people are used to and that that's what throws them yeah yeah all right so what's the best what 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 simulator has the best physics in your opinion for learning Ooh, i'm probably not the right but I, I fly velocidrone that's what i fly yeah didn't velocidrone just update everything yeah, there's been a few, I think. I haven't, I, I try not to update stuff that works, but there has been a bunch of updates. And, uh, physics is always a complicated one because it never, I've never flown one that feels like an FPV drone. They all feel different, don't they? They all feel, you know, you suddenly think, I'm the man. And then you get the real quad out and you're like, I'm shocking. Right, when <laughs> real gravity takes over. Yeah, 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 real yeah. I can natty flip the world. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. trippy spin um, in a simulator. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, then suddenly you go to the real world and go, why am I in the hedge? <laughs> yeah, again. Uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> well, um, before we let you go, uh, I, will, no, I too want to thank you for all of your sharing of, of your knowledge and your passion, because that's what we need. We need uh, passionate ambassadors like you and, and Dave and other people watching to, to get this to spread, not just FPV, but, you know, all drones. Getting that flying is a wonderful and fun thing and i thank you for being a part of this wonderful community i really appreciate that Ken. and you look you know look what i love about fpv is the community as well and it's not just the community of users it's the community of youtubers the community of everyone you know there's a great bunch of people i love the fact that you have me you there's sean there's bardwell and 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 if something funny goes off people can send each other messages mm -hmm. and and talk ken dobo every there's a great bunch of people in FPV and you know everyone just wants to help each other which is a fantastic thing. What would Everybody's you like to so real and approachable? Yeah. It, it it really is. Yeah. Um what would you like to say in parting? What what do you feel that uh, people need to know from you? What is a bit of information you would like to leave us with, sir? Ooh, that, that's a tough one. You should have prepared for that. One. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um I think more than anything it, it's just get out and fly. Mm -hmm. Fly more. I don't fly enough. Yeah. I honestly don't fly enough. And and actually that's the payoff of having a YouTube channel and and the reality is you spend a lot of time doing stuff. You 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 can never substitute anything for stick time. Stick time is the number one thing that will right. make you bad. And we'll get through all of this rough spot with regulation and and everything. And we'll come out the other it, side, right? At the end of the day, Get, pick up your drone, find a quiet field, go flying. Stop worrying about the regs. It's so awesome. Nobody's going to stop us. They can't no, stop no, us. No, no. Can't, you the you the can end. try. Just, 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 just get, <laughs> find yourself a quiet field. Just go flying. Yeah. And if somebody yeah. tries to stop you, just put the goggles on them. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Change their mind. Awesome. Yeah. Ian, well, thank yeah. you so much. Mads Tech, appreciate your... Uh, what time is it there now? Oh, my God. What time is it there in uh, Wales? I'm gonna pretend it's like 9 p.m. Uh huh. It's four <laughs> it's something. Actually, isn't it? It's about. It's heading 37 to two. So oh. it's fine. It's not. Too All right. Bad. Go to bed. Go to nighty night. And we'll we'll talk to you later. Thank you very it's much, been a privilege. Sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Awesome. Thank we'll you, see you Ian. later. All right, man. Stay safe. We should probably mention remotepilot101.com. Isn't it a great place? Great place. It is a great place. Tell us about your place, Jason. So Remote Pilot 101, no one has uh, prepared more Part 107 pilots than us. And you'll be pleased, uh, those of you who are current customers now, uh, you're gonna be experiencing version three uh, and a brand new learning management system in about two weeks. So the best just keeps on getting better. RemotePilot101.com, use co promo code HERON18. Which by the way, Ken, yeah. I can't brag on you enough. When we search promo codes, you, you know me, I'm, I'm all about our marketing and everything else. Heron18 is the most used promo code. Your people listen to you, Ken. Yay, thank Seriously. you, people. I appreciate that. And you, cool. you've been very busy updating the lessons, too, because there's... Uh, there's not a... Every video has gotten a facelift. There's 76 videos in there. Every single one has gotten a facelift. The course has gone from... Um, nine hours, almost 12 hours now. There's just so much new content. We're always trying to um, innovate, push new content. Now with all um, the recurrent tests changing so much, we're, we're like, wow, we just launched our new course. We need to fix it now. So we're, we're back to that. I was just reviewing some of the stuff our writers sent over earlier for some of the content. And there's some more great stuff coming out here soon as well. And uh, you take actual questions that uh, test takers give you uh, and kind of incorporate those in the in the quizzes too, right? So they're actual yep, FAA yep. We, uh, questions. 
we have a ton, a ton of data on that, no doubt. So yeah, and I always share, you know this, Ken, we have, I call them the boot camps at the end where I share, this is a question you're gonna see on your knowledge test. Let, let's not memorize it, let's understand the why behind it, uh, but just to prepare them for the knowledge test. You know this though, Ken, I want you to be safe in the real world. My mission isn't just to pass a test. I want you safe when you're out there flying FPV, whatever it is, so you can be uh, a light and be a mentor to everybody else that's out there wondering about what this new drone space is. Even though it's not that new, but to many it is so new. We have to be ambassadors to that. You're a shining star, Jason. A shining oh, star. Awesome.